We keep getting these warnings now that home ownership could become an impossible dream for many in this country. Prices continue to skyrocket in most of our capitals. An average of 20% have risen over the past year. Sydney is now the third least affordable market in the world behind Hong Kong and Vancouver. Melbourne is sixth. Even Adelaide and Brisbane make an appearance in the top 20 list of unaffordable markets. Jason Flinsky is the Liberal member for the Sydney seat of McKellar. He's been looking into the issue of housing affordability in a parliamentary inquiry. He joins me now live from Parliament House. Good to talk to you again, Jason. Uh, we, we, had a, we ran out of time last week to talk about this issue. A and you pointed out uh, what I think is the obvious fact for anyone who looks at this area, and that is that local government rules and state government rules are critical here. State governments put on stamp duty and they constrict the supply of land. Local governments stop people dividing up their land and uh, approving developments. Uh, if you do those things, of course, you're going to push prices down, right? Well, you, you, yeah, they go right up, uh, Chris. So um, what we've seen over and over again during this inquiry, and we had, um, we had uh, five, five of Australia's largest builders um, give evidence to the committee on Friday. And what they basically, you know, as one of them said, it would be easier to get a nuclear um, power station approved in New South Wales than a residential housing development. <laughs> um, that's how bad it's got. I mean, it, and, and the impact is when... I mean, it's just Economics 101. If you don't have supply and demand continues to rise, then there's only one place for prices to go, and that's up. Yeah, now there are local government elections uh, coming up this weekend in New South Wales. You see all the normal campaigning. It's the same in the other cities, of course. But the usual push of people trying to get elected onto councils is that they're anti-development. Everyone wants to keep their suburb the way it is. Now, you don't want just open slather, right? You don't want every house divided and knocked down for a, no. a block of flats. But, but there's been too little willingness to have urban infill consolidation in those sort of middle suburbs, hasn't there? Is that, is that a problem? Absolutely. So there's an economist by the name of Peter Tulip who has done, you know, a vast array of economic, econometric analysis. And he says that an apartment in Sydney, in the in inner city Sydney, 68% of that price is due to the zoning laws and the development decisions of Clover Moore. Now, if there is one part of in Sydney where no one is going to object to a multi-level housing development, it is in the CBD of Sydney. But Clover has, for a number of years, maybe even two decades, done everything she can to stop it. So when you look at housing development in Sydney, it's all been in the middle ring, not in the inner ring, which is close to jobs, close to infrastructure and close to where people want to live. And that is a fundamental problem that we face not just in Sydney but right across the country. Yeah, because that impacts then on the next day level out and the houses uh, that, that other people move to afterwards. I mean, uh, yeah, Sydney, I mean, what, what would be... How terrible? People living in apartments in the city. I mean, that's exactly what should be happening. Now, the other angle on this I wanted to get your thoughts on is because the, it plays into decentralisation as well. Uh, one of the problems in Australia, we are very centralised. So you've got a sort of half the population trying to get into either Melbourne, Sydney or south-east Queensland. There's cheaper housing available in the regions. To what extent do we just let the market dictate this? People can't buy a house in Sydney or Melbourne so they can move to the regional cities or to a country town. Or should governments somehow facilitate that? So, Chris, if ever there was an example of how the high priests of housing policy are opposed to young Australians owning their own home, what you have just mentioned is exactly it. So, right during COVID... Um, hundreds, if not thousands, of Australians wanted to move to regional and rural areas. They can't because the housing crisis there now is so acute. You can't find rental accommodation. Coffs Harbour has run out of zone land on which to build new houses to take care of the population that wants to move in there. And it is a story that is repeated in Bathurst, in Orange, in Dubbo, in Bega. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And why is this the case? Because local governments I cannot process the development applications fast enough and have this multi-process, multi-tier process so that anyone who wants to build something needs a 1,000 people to say yes but only one person to say no. And then you have the state governments who continue to benefit and profit from this situation. 
because the higher housing prices go, the more money they make from stamp duty and the more money local governments make from developer um, contributions. And the, who are the losers from this? Young Australians, Australians under 40, who just want their piece of the Australian dream. Thanks for joining us, Jason. Such an important issue. Thank you, Chris. Really appreciate it. Jason Falinski there. Let's hope we see some action from government now to get government out of the way here. You buy a bit of land, you want to build a house, it should be simple. Government should encourage you to do that. Spend your money.